Good morning. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and it is Tuesday morning. How do we get here this soon? I don't know about you, but time seems to be flying really by fast. All right, I have a couple of finished items. I do have the couple of whips that I'm still working on, and I got some Happy Mail. So I think we will start with the Happy Mail. Now this came to me anonymous. <laughs> you know, the other day I showed you the Dragon's Blood Sphere and I had complained about how um, they didn't send a stand. Which normally, you know, whoever's selling crystals, stones, those kind of things, if it's a sphere, they will send you a stand. Well, one of you <laughs> sent me a whole bunch of stands. <laughs> different sizes. Um, I package says there's 24. Do I know who sent it? No. All I, all that was in the package was this is a gift. So whoever you are, thank you. But you also did something a little bit more. You included two Dragon's Blood Spheres. And here is the first one. And then here is the second. And it has that beautiful deep maroon red that I like. Along with the beautiful green tone. So whichever one of you friends sent that to me, thank you so much. It was just a really nice gift. Alright, for the whips, we're going to do those first. Continuing to work on that... Uh, little pillow sleeve that I've been working on and I had to tell you this week it has been really hard trying to find time to just sit down crochet or knit my comfy shawl again a comfy shawl comfy sweater has started and um, I didn't mention the color when I had started this as you know greens one of my favorite colors and I chose this because I had the yarn sitting in front of me. And I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and use that yarn. And the name of that yarn, of course, is I Love This um, Yarn by Hobby Lobby. And it's Be Still. <laughs> I just thought that was rather interesting. Now, some of you saw this when I had showed it on um, Roving roving mm. roaming with rover when we did the live um, but some of you haven't this is the that Tunisian shawl that I was and actually was actually supposed to be a baby blanket the uh, bias baby blanket by Tony Lipsky and I got bored with it so of course once I got halfway through I thought I'm gonna turn it into a small shawl added some double crochets, single crochets around it, and it's done. Now, I've been working on this quilt for a little while. And of course, because the main color is black, it is picking up all the dust, lint, and you name it. And it is the third one of these that I have made. And this is in that Amish they call it the Amish star. So, finally got this one finished quilting. Um, most likely it is going to the prayer shawl um, for a baby. Unless, unless my little neighbor boy gets it. He keeps telling me, you know, the kids in his Head Start class, they all have little quilts. He doesn't have a quilt and it upsets him. So I may just give it to Ollie. That way he can take it to head start. He'll have his own quilt. That is it for the makes and those kind of things. The only other thing that I would like to ask of you is we have two of our fellow yarn community members who are so close to getting their watch 
hours in and they need your help. The first one is Stephanie's Yarn Escape. Um, I'll leave a link as well as the links to the stories, those kind of things down below. So if you would go over and watch a few of her videos, help her get to her 4,000 uh, watch hours, and also Ray's Yarn Addiction. She is also so close to that. And you know, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. We need to get these ladies up to a thousand so they can at least start monetizing and make a few dollars every couple of months like the rest of us. No, as smaller channels, we don't make a lot of money this way. But I look at it like this. If you're going to have to sit and watch the ads, it needs to go somewhere. And it also allows us to put more money back into our content for you. So please consider, whenever you go watch any of these other uh, channels I talk about, please consider subscribing and watching their videos. You can put them on in the background. Just let them play. Put a playlist on. Just let it play in the background. That is one of the ways that you are helping YouTube content creators. The other thing is this year they are putting more emphasis on interaction action with um, subscribers. So, another way is make a comment. Doesn't have to be a big comment, just great job. Make a comment. The more comments that they see, the more they're going to recommend your channel out to others. So, and you know, sometimes those things blow up. My deal with Ravelry, Ravelry I think I have 500 subscribers. I get up the next morning after I posted that video and I had over 2,000. I was like, what? What? <laughs> but that was a hot subject at that time. All right. I'll tell you a little bit about what's going, in the going on in the house. I had a little bit of a disappointment last night. Um, I had purchased a fan to go in the master bedroom. And I'll put a picture here. The fan came, but here's the problem. The actual part of the fan was damaged. So I contacted the company. They sent a replacement. The problem is the replacement is too big for the fan. And I'll put a picture of those two fans here so you can see. See, there's an issue. <laughs> so I contacted them again last night. Um, basically, they told me they're not interchangeable. We're sorry we made the mistake. We do not have another fan that we can replace it with at the moment. So now I have to send it back, get a refund, and go looking again. And I really had my heart set on that fan. It's beautiful. It's a light fixture and fan. And it's beautiful. But stuff happens, right? The house is going along really well. Um, I am hoping to get over there to film tomorrow. I believe the um, contractor said that all of the siding is up. And my front door is up. Yay! Um, and yesterday we did go to pick out the cabinets and the granite for the cabinets and sinks and all that fun stuff. Now my contractor likes to tease me about <laughs> that, you know, I really need to work with him because he's making all the decisions. Here are the decisions that he has made. When we ordered the front door, there, um, I forgot about looking at the, the different grills on the front door. I was in a prayer shawl meeting, and he kept texting me about it. And, of course, I couldn't answer because I was leading the prayer shawl meeting. So, when I finished with that, I called him and said, What's up? He said, Too late. I already chose. So, he chose the grill for the front of the door, which is fine. 
and he also chose the color of the trim that goes around the base of the house and frames up the house that goes along with the siding that I chose. One more decision. We were talking about lighting for the outside of the house. He's already made that decision because he wants it lit up very well because I live alone. So, he was worried about my safety. That's the problem when you have a contractor who is also a friend. <laughs> they don't always listen to your choices. Because um, he also ordered a lamp pole for me. I did not want a lamp pole. And I have teased him. I'm not paying for that lamp pole. That's coming out of your pocket. So, uh... There you go. All right. That is it for now. Oh, with the exception of a window. We're still waiting on one of the windows for the sunroom. Um, it didn't come with the original windows, you know, for the house. They forgot it. It was supposedly in Pittsburgh. It was coming the next week. And then it was coming this week. Well, now it's not coming until February the 2nd. So, who knows? Oh, uh, contractor and I have both figured that he, they probably have another order that's being delivered here that time, so they're just going to deliver them both at the same time. <laughs> All right. What in tarnation? Are you ready for a little bit? Here we go. Dallas Zoo finds missing clouded leopard. The Dallas Zoo said its missing clouded leopard was found unharmed on zoo property Friday evening hours after the animal had been reported missing from her habitat. The Dallas Police Department said it launched an investigation to determine if the leopard's habitat was intentionally damaged, allowing the animal to escape. The zoo said the animal, named Nova, was being evaluated by its veterinary staff. The zoo was closed to the public earlier on Friday, and the police were summoned to help search for Nova. The zoo said on a Facebook post that workers discovered that the clouded leopard was missing from its enclosure when they arrived at the facility that morning. A code blue <coughs> was issued, meaning a non-dangerous animal was missing from its habitat. However, they did find her about 5.15, and um, they found that she was not injured. So, of course, the vets are still evaluating her. Well, I'm sure they're finished by now. There is a video. The problem with clouded leopards is they're not as big as what you think they are. So, sometimes they hide within the area. But, uh, go watch the video. Okay. Who doesn't love Olive Garden? That is uh, Jerry and I's favorite place to go eat when we go shopping for yarn or whatever. You know, just because we get a choice, we usually go during lunch so we can get the lunch special. Yep. All right. Loose Cow visits Olive Garden Restaurant in Oklahoma. I'm sure they just wanted a nice meal. Maybe that endless uh, soup and salad bar. Who knows? Police in Oklahoma put their cowboy skills to the test when a loose cow was spotted wandering outside an Olive Garden restaurant. The Stillwater Police Department said officers responded alongside the animal welfare when a loose cow was spotted Thursday near the Olive Garden in Stillwater. Officers questioned the cow and learned that the cow had heard about the never-ending soup and salad option at Olive Garden and decided to see for itself. The cow was safely corralled and relocated from the animal. The animal's origins were unclear, and if you've ever been to Oklahoma, there's a lot of cattle. <laughs> Long, you know, it's, it's a lot like New Mexico and Texas, a lot of cattle. Selena Superfan seeks Guinness World Record for a collection. A Texas man whose collection dedicated to, to the singer Selena Guantanile, Guantanila I always have trouble with her last name. Includes nearly 1,300 pieces, and he is seeking a Guinness World Record. Andrew Longoria said he became a Selena fan in 1997 when his grandmother bought him 
the Dreaming of You CD, two years after the singer's death. I was five years old when I got the album. Just uh, kind of thinking about it, I'm going to be 30 next week. So to know how long I've been a fan and been collecting, it's pretty phenomenal, to be perfectly honest. Longoria said his grandmother also served as an inspiration for his collection, as she was well known for her Elvis Presley memorabilia collection. Longoria has been chronicling his collection on Instagram page since 2014 and has amassed thousands of followers. He said he will officially attempt the Guinness World Record for the longest Selena collection January the 27th by cataloging every item. And I will tell you, one of the gals that I worked with the night that Selena was murdered, she was my multi-skilled tech that night. And um, she was the first cousin to Selena. And we were working. And we were actually in a patient's room repositioning the patient when the news came across the screen. I can't tell you the emotions that ran through both of us that day because Christina and I had worked so closely together for the past five, six years. And, you know, I had heard so many stories um, about her cousin and the things that they did together when they were younger and as they got older and when they would get together and visit and you know and and I had the opportunity to meet Selena once in my life and she was such a beautiful person so we were both pretty overcome with emotions that evening and it was difficult to finish the um, shift together but we held what each other up. We managed to get through it. And, um, yeah, that is, those are those kind of memories that you kind of cherish, but at the same time, they do make you sad. So, um, but I'm glad that there are so many people that still love Selena. She was such, like I said, she was such a beautiful woman, beautiful singer. The music is just beautiful. All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Suitcase lost by airline turns up four years later after a detour to Honduras. An Oregon woman whose suitcase was lost during a United Airlines flight home from Chicago said she was reunited with the bag four years later after it took a detour to Central America. April Gavin posted a series of videos to TikTok explaining how her luggage was lost by the airline when she flew home from a business trip to Chicago in August of 2018. Gavin said after several months of searching, the airline informed her that the baggage's disappearance was a mystery. She was compensated for the loss of some of her items, but not all of them, she said. She said she was really shocked to receive a phone call this week informing her that her suitcase had turned up at an airport in Houston. She said she was further surprised to be told it had arrived on a flight from Honduras. It was in Honduras and who knows where else it went. But it did come from Honduras, went to Houston, Texas, and they called her. Gavin said the bag was slightly damaged and worn, but its contents were intact. She said United Airlines told her part of the difficulty in tracking the bag was that it hadn't been properly scanned when she checked it before flying to Chicago. And you know, many a time, many of those times, those items actually never get back to the person after so many years. They go to the, you know, the hubs, outlet stores where they're sold. So... She luckily got it back. All right. Giant goldfish left in a bucket rescued from a seagull attack. Animal rescuers in Guernsey said a massive goldfish that had been left in a bucket was rescued after proving to be too large to make a meal for a seagull. It's got to be a pretty big goldfish. 
The Guernsey Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals said members of the public reported a large goldfish in a bucket was being attacked by a seagull. We are asking to help all sorts of animals, but it's rare that we are asked to help a goldfish abandoned in a bucket. But however, they did do it. We have named him Captain Birdseye, and despite his injuries, he is doing well. If we don't find his owners in the next three weeks, we will be looking to find him home. Captain Bird's, Bird's Eye is one very lucky goldfish. If he wasn't so big, he would have likely been eaten. <sighs> you know, many times we misidentify animals. Um, one of the times Thomas's um, advisor when we were in Blacksburg when he was getting his PhD had told us that he had this tomcat that kept bothering his cats. You know, he said so he decided he was going to catch this cat and, you know, get it somewhere else. So he caught this cat and he t was telling us about the, the strange meow that this cat had and, you know, the looks of it. And, you know, Thomas and I started laughing. We're like, Fred, what'd you do with this animal? He's like, well, I took it across the highway and let it loose. He goes, why? Did, did you know the owner? Uh, no, Fred, but that was a bobcat. That wasn't a tomcat. That was a bobcat. Tough deers, the whole thing. <sighs> why? Next story. Bison on the loose in Indiana turn out to be yaks. Authorities in Indiana said a herd of loose animals initially thought to be bison turned out to be something even more unusual, yaks. The Noblesville Fire Department and Police Department and the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office responded Monday to a report of large animals on the loose in Noblesville. There are bison loose near 161st Street and east of Hazeldale Parkway. Please use alternative routes so they can be safely returned to their home, the fire department wrote in a social media post. However, the police later clarified that the animals were not bison. Animal identification was not covered at the academy. These are yaks, and while they may not be as regal as bison, it was still a fun call. They wrote in a Facebook post, The yaks, they're very native to Tibet and Nepal, were safely corralled and returned to their owner's property. Now here's my question. Were they raising these yaks to sell their uh, fleece? To spin into yarn. If you've never worked with yak, it's a rather interesting fiber to work with. All right, that's it for today's podcast. Um, let's get on to today's reading. Let me get to the page, folks. Not shaken. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. This comes from Psalm 52, no, Psalm 55, verse 22, the New American Standard Bible. We all have different ways of dealing with worry. Some internalize it, others call a friend, and still others find a way to take their minds off it. When we bring our worry to God and lay our anxious hearts bare before Him, He will encourage us, lift us up, and sustain us. He will not allow us to be shaken or weakened by worry, because He holds us through every situation. The God who knows beginning from end is not flustered by our anxiety and does not allow us to be overcome by uncertainty. What anxiety do you need to give to God today? Now, I'm also going to answer a question. Um, I had someone who had asked me um, 
how I came to the choosing a word each year or a phrase each year. And um, I didn't always do that. Um, but I do have a friend, Jerry, who had talked about this in the past. And I come to the conclusion, and I'll tell you what happened. Um, this was towards before a couple of weeks before Thomas passed away. It was my birthday, February the 5th. And he was scheduled for a chemo treatment. Now, he hadn't had a chemo treatment since the end of no, no, since no, right around Christmas time at, uh, in December. And of course, he had a reaction, started bleeding out. Um, that was the time his platelet count got down to almost under one. They didn't think he was going to make it. He did make it. We finally got out of the hospital um, after Christmas, you know, and home. Um, and he chose not to go to his January chemo treatment because he said he just felt like he needed a break. I understood that. But he was scheduled on my birthday for a chemo treatment. I get up, making, you know, everything get ready. And I said, aren't you going to get ready? And he looked at me and he said, no, I canceled that. I was very angry that day because I knew that he was not going to be here much longer. And I was at that point, emotions, I was at that point that he gave up. And I was really angry. He thought I was angry with him. I was angry with God. But he had asked me to go out. Um, normally on our birthdays, we would just choose a restaurant to go out to eat together. Um, we'd done that for years because, you know, we always felt like, what is, you know, why buy another knickknack or whatever? Unless there was something that each of us really wanted, then we would buy it for each other. So I went out to pick up takeout that day. And as I was out, I found a bull, uh, billboard that had on it, Be Courageous. At that point, that became my motto for the rest of the year. And I'm going to read you the verse that I chose. If I can. It is Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. And do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go. So yeah, that is how I came to that that first year. And I've decided it's a good tradition. And this year, I'm feeling very blessed. So that is why this year's is blessed. Alright friends, I hope to see you again soon. And uh, everybody have a great day. Remember, be kind to one another, love one another. Get out there and see this big, beautiful world. And go see some of Stephanie and also Ray's videos. Let's get their watch hours up. See you guys soon. Bye.